welcome to the BBC News Schools Report, live from Penkin High School. Today, our Year 9 news teams have been creating news reports all over school. Now, our first report, who are reporting on the tsunami in Japan. Over to Lucy. Um, what do you think caused the Japan earthquake? Well, the main reason was the two plates moving together. And what happened is that the Pacific plate hit the Japanese plate and went underneath the plate and caused an earthquake to happen just off the coast of Japan. Um, do you think earthquakes have increased in the last five years? Only because we're hearing it in the news. It's because we get the communications into the country so quickly, we're hearing about all these things happening. They're happening all the time. And if we happen all the time, you know, it's good that we know that these things are going on. So we can do something to help those countries that are in need. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, do you think our skills to start a fundraiser? I think it's important that people are aware that a lot of money will be needed to help Japan get back on its feet. Um, and I think it's important for young people to be able to see the importance of their contributions. So I think a fundraiser would be a good idea if you came up with a really good idea. Thank you. What do you think about tsunami in Japan? Um, I think it's absolutely terrible what's going on over there. Um, seeing the pictures of the waves come over the land and the destruction it caused was absolutely awful. What about your Japanese friends? Uh, everyone I know in Japan is safe. They all got in. Most people lived in the south of the country um, and they weren't affected quite as much. The one person in Tokyo really, really felt the earthquake, but he's safe, so he's okay. Thank you. What do you think about the tsunami in Japan? Yeah, I think it's an atrocious event that went on. Um, I bet loads of people have died and they, they are suffering. No right, it's been the biggest natural disaster in history. Let us pray for the victims and families who have lost their lives. May the Almighty grant us, each one of us, with the wisdom and strength to stand the test of such a trying circumstances. Thank you for that first report, Lucy. Now over to Beth with a report on petrol prices. Hello and welcome to BBC News School Report. I am Georgia. And I am Beth. Today we're going to be reporting on the price of petrol and how it affects different age groups. We're going to be interviewing some students, some sixth formers and some teachers, all from Penketh High. Um, petrol has become less affordable uh, ever since I passed my test um, several years ago now. Uh, petrol has become less and less affordable over time uh, to a point where now it really is quite expensive. If, if I was going to say public transport into school I'd have to go all the way into Liverpool city centre and then back out again and I'd add a good hour onto my journey every morning. There's too much tax on petrol that you can afford to take at least 50-60p off of petrol prices. Because like the petrol prices have been going up and diesel especially, and we use diesel. The prices of petrol, the 1p difference is not a very big change, but it's better than nothing, to be honest. And thank you to the people who participated today in answering our questions. Thank you for watching. Bye, Bye for, for now. now. Thanks for that, Beth. Our next report with Mike, who is reporting on Libya. What do you think about the war in Libya? I'm out at Penkup High School asking the staff and students about this matter. What are your feelings on the war in Libya? Um, it's very worrying, um, the war on Libya. I feel that at the moment it's at a point where trying to remove an extremist figure, um, but there's, there's right and wrong ways to go about it. For example, the, the, the rebels might want to actually succeed and, and remove them themselves if, if international help is provided. It might take away from their moment of, of trying to get some sort of democracy. Do you think we should get involved in Libya? Um, a lot of people are saying, why should we use our armed forces to go in? Um, I have relatives in the armed forces, but at the end of the day, um, as a country, may, maybe we do have a responsibility. Um, if there's people in the world that want democracy, want freedom, then we should be there to support it as well, you know. How does the war affect Libya's economy? It's affected the economy quite a lot because they are one of the massive uh, exporters of oil. And if they're not going to be able to export their oil, the economy is going to go down quite rapidly. And that's going to cause problems. Do you think it was necessary for us to bombard the streets of Libya? No, to be honest, I think that England should just kept out of it because it's not got anything to do with them. It's just that country's little catastrophe, catastrophe that's going on at the moment. and. 
yeah, I don't think England should be going in because it's their problem really and we can't do anything to help it. We can't like do it, say anything to their government. This is Lewis reporting from Penkiff High School for BBC School News Report. Cheers for that report, Mike. Now our next report, we have Ashley with a climb by Mandy Parry. At 11.58 on the 20th of March 1993, Telephone Help Charity The Samaritans received a coded message that a bomb was going to be detonated outside the Boots shop in Liverpool, 15 miles away from Warrington. Merseyside Police investigated and also won the Cheshire Constabulary of the threat, but it was too late to evacuate. At 12.12pm, 12 two bombs exploded, one outside Boots on Bridge Street and the other outside the August Catalogue store. Eyewitnesses said that the first explosion drove panicked shoppers into the path of the next flash just seconds later. Buses were organised to ferry people away from the scene, and 20 paramedics and crews from 17 ambulances were sent to deal with the aftermath. It was later determined that the bomb had been placed inside cast iron litter bins, causing large amounts of shrapnel. Three-year-old Jonathan Ball died at the scene while his baby sister survived. The second victim, 12-year-old Tim Parry, survived the impact with multiple injuries, but died on the 25th of March 1993. Peace Centre was set up by the parents of Tim Parry for people to help stop conflict. Based on the purpose-built state-of-the-art Peace Centre, the Trust is dedicated to the working with adults, children and the peace organisations which aim to resolve conflicts at a local, national and international level. His vision of promoting peace and building a better future is achieved through their mission to develop peace building skills and change lives. The mother and sister of the IRA bomb victim, Tim Perry, was failed after tired money to raise funds for a charity set up in his memory. Wendy Perry, aged 53, and Darla Addy, aged 28, have agreed to climb 5,893 metres, which is 19,334 feet high Mount Kilimanjaro in Tanzania with the Tim Perry Jonathan Ball Foundation for Peace, located at Old Hall's Peace Centre. What do you know about the 1993 bombing? Uh, it was the day I moved to Warrington and um, two young boys were, were killed, Jonathan Ball and Tim Perry. Have you ever met or know of Wendy Perry? I know of Wendy Perry, I've never met her, uh, but I know she was involved in setting up the Peace Centre. Uh, what is your involvement with the Peace Centre? Uh, we do lo lots of work with the Peace Centre, uh, we use their facilities, a lot of our pupils go there after school because they have lots of clubs and, and lots of things going on for them. You've been working closer with the Peace Centre, what's the story behind it? Uh, it was set up for peace where your pupils can go and get involved in things and to keep them off the streets. Um, and what do you think of Wendy Perry's charity Climb of Kilimanjaro? I think it's fantastic, any involvement to to recognise the Peace Centre because they do fantastic work down there and to keep it going. Manjaro, 5,985 metres high, northeast Tanzania in Africa. Kilimanjaro is the biggest mountain in Africa. One third of people who tried to climb it failed. 43,000 have tried and still counting. Now to Zoe with a recent report on a gas explosion in Runcorn. Welcome to our BBC report. There's been a gas explosion in Runcorn at a block of flats on Boston Street. How do you think the evacuees are feeling? Um, I'm sure they are feeling really, really scared. Probably scared. I think if it was me and I was woken up at half past five, I would be terrified. Um, but I'd also be relieved that someone had taken the action to come and get me out of my house and put me to a place of safety. So I bet they're just a bit unsure about what's going on, whether they can go home with things. So Do you think the um, emergency services will deal with it quickly? <laughs> Quite quickly. Um, it looks as if they already have, because they would have been involved in the evacuation, wouldn't they? Um, and I, I feel like Hello. they would deal with it very, very sensibly. And yeah, they would um, look after the people involved, because it must be a really scary time. Oh, hello. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. How well do you think the situation would have been dealt with? I think the situation has been dealt with very effectively. As we can see from the news report, basically um, all the residents were moved out. Even though it was quite early in the morning, all the residents were moved out and they were taken to safety to a local community centre and no one was injured. So I feel that the emergency services were very effective. The police were called to Richard Closey Castle run Con at 25 past 5 this morning after residents reported a cell of gas at the time of the explosion. 
Most of the residents had been moved to a nearby community centre after safety precaution. No one was injured and a joint investigation is underway into the cause of the blast. Sergeant Simon Hynett from Cheshire Police said the force was awaiting an inspection of the building. There is some structural damage. We are waiting on details from structural engineers as the state of the building goes out and structural issues were, we are unaware of at the moment. I thought, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for that, Zoe. Now over to our sports report with Jed. Hello, I'm Jed. And I'm Dan. And welcome to BBC News School Report. We are here at the home of Liverpool Football Club, Anfield, to see whether Kenny Daglish should remain as Liverpool manager or will a former manager reclaim the reins. We caught up with some fans and critics earlier from Penkup High School to see what they think of it. As a die-hard Liverpool fan, do you think Kenny should have the job on a permanent <coughs> basis and why? Uh, yeah, I think he should have the job on a permanent basis. Um, I think the reason you should have a job on a permanent basis is the fact that realistically I don't think there's anyone out there who can do the job that he's doing at Liverpool. Should Kenny get at least have a job on a permanent basis at Liverpool? To be honest, I think that would be a mistake. Um, I think that they've gone on nostalgia and, and previous things that he's achieved at the club. I think it's the wrong man for the job, to be honest. Uh, you need someone more modern, you know, modern ways of training, modern tactics. And Dalglish really isn't the man for that. Uh, I think in the long term he'll actually take Liverpool backwards and I can see them definitely being a championship side. As a Manchester United fan, do you see Kenny Dalglish as more, as a, more of a threat than Rafa Benitez? I don't really see any, any Liverpool manager as a threat. I'd say Roy Evans was a little bit of a threat. Um, but since then, no, you know, I've not seen any of the managers as a threat. Um, Rafa did well, he did okay. Um, I think he had some interesting ideas and he did actually pass the halfway line now and again, um, rare that was. And yeah, Kenny's doing okay, but I, I wouldn't ever use the term threat and Liverpool to United in the same sentence. Do you think Kenny Dalgley should have the job on a permanent basis? Um, yeah, I do, because since he's taken over, I think the, the report um, with the team is much better. Um, I think he's taking the team places, he's doing quite well now. And also, he's got that loyalty from when he played for them himself back in the day. So clearly there are mixed emotions about who the current Liverpool boss should be. But what do you think? Only time will tell. I'm Danny. And I'm Jed. We're reporting from Anfield. This is BBC News School Report. Cheers, Jed. Now to our last report with Jamie, who is reporting on the Red Nose Day. Today we'll find out how we, as our school, have helped break a fundraising record for comic relief. Hello, I'm Mitch Fury, Galaxy Trader, and uh, what did you do for Comic Relief? Well, me and about 12 other students did a dance dance competition, which is big dance dance mats, and in front of the rest of the college in here, dance into a Lady Gaga poker face. Raised about £12 in all. Uh, had a bit of fun on the side, did something funny for money. Thank you for your time. Hello, Danny. Hiya. What did you do for Comet Relief? Well, in drama, three of me other mates, we did impersonations of like famous celebrities. Like we dressed up in like red clothing, and it was just so funny. That's how I got my big smile on my face because just thinking about it to help all those people in like Africa and poor countries. It's really, it's just fantastic that we could do something to help him. Well done. What, how much money did you raise? Well, overall we raised, it's quite good for us, but 50 quid, which obviously will go towards things like five quid pace for and malaria nets and stuff like that. So to help them poorer people in Africa, stuff like that, I think we have contributed a lot to it. Thanks. Thanks for listening. No problems. This is Jamie, reporting from Penkup High School for School Reports. Thanks for that, Jamie, and thank you for watching. Thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Good night.